big Sony, what, what do they call these? House speakers, rack speakers that were becoming popular, what, mid, late 80s into the 90s. Seems like every brand was making them. These are Sony ones, uh, particularly the Sony SSU 541AV. Why do I have them? Um, cause they were 20 bucks and they weren't too far away. So I picked them up. Um, and actually the main reason is because back in 1991, me and dad went to Sears, picked out a, I think it was like $2,000, uh, well, it wasn't called 5.1. Then it was just a Dolby stereo system. And it was, the speakers looked almost exactly like these tweeter mid were the same, but they had the 12 inch woofer. These are a 10. And I think these are slightly newer. Um, the 12 inch woofers that were in ours, the foam surround was inverted, where these uh, is, you know, it rolls out on the, the ones we had, the 12s, the surround rolled in or was inverted. I don't uh, know exactly. We got it in 91, but it might have come out in 1990. I don't know. I don't actually remember, unfortunately, the model numbers of the speakers like these or the stereo because it's long gone. But I've seen these, and they remind me exactly like them. And I'll probably keep looking if, uh, if a set shows up that is the exact same, because I'm pretty sure they're popular. They sold tons of those stereos. But yeah, for now, these are close. They remind me of them, and they're 20 bucks. And I've always liked these big speakers, even though most of them were terrible. Uh, extremely cheaply built. These, I call them, basically, they were like just profit boxes. They were just big, cheap speakers. And then they would put it with a bunch of cheap components most of the time and then turn around and sell it to you for like two grand. And the guy at Sears, would, you know, Circuit City would ever talk it up. It's awesome. It's got five speakers. It's Dolby, blah, blah, blah. Ours came with a five disc CD changer and a coupon for five free CDs in 91. I remember it took forever to pick out CDs because there wasn't a lot of CDs to pick from at Sears then. Um, dual cassette deck, tuner, EQ, you know, you know, it had about everything but a turntable. These are going to get something I wanted to do to big crappy speakers like this. If you have a big set of speakers like this and you absolutely love them, fine, whatever. If you like them, you like them. Stock, they're pretty terrible though. Um, I've always wanted to take a set of these and see if I can make them better. Even though they have all these cheap drivers, uh, super thin cabinet like half inch and it's not even mdf it's like some of these other speakers are it's literally chipboard or particle board it's it's less than mdf it's you know <laughs> it's so cheap um and then of course you have this giant cabinet with no bracing nothing <laughs> that and you can hear the panels the glue has let go Ugh. Here. Yeah. Oh, that's terrible. Just big hollow box. With, um, these, I think they did have a little sheet of like, maybe like one inch thick fiberglass insulation hanging in there. But and that was it. I, I can't imagine it was doing much. And then uh, here's the uh, terminal for the back. Literally typical spring clips. And then the crossover literally consists of just two caps or base stoppers. So you have a, a cap for the tweeter. Uh, I don't know which one's which. I don't remember. But you have a cap that's going to block, say, frequencies below. Um, oh, I think I do remember. The, the tweeter cap was blocking frequencies below 16,000 hertz. So the tweeter on these is barely doing anything. Because ba face it, that four or five inch mid is pretty much a giant tweeter. Um, but yeah, if, if I remember right, the cap on the tweeter was blocking everything below 16,000 hertz. And the cap on the mid was blocking everything below, I want to say, six or 7,000 hertz. And then the woofer has nothing on it. It has a crossover determined by physics. It basically runs high as it can go until... The laws of physics stop it. And um, these I haven't measured. If you can't tell, the foam surround is crumbling. So I don't know if I hooked it to my dad's V3 if I'd get a 
honest measurement or not anymore. <laughs> Um, but I imagine these speakers aren't that great at six, five, six thousand hertz. So it's kind of, kind of crazy that they just let them run wild and let physics roll them off. So these will be going bye bye. Uh, new crossovers will be coming in. I did hook the mids and tweeters to my DATS V3 and run them to get their frequency range, and then I also hooked them up and did a. Well, I did a, just a, a sweep with Rue uh, at one foot away to kind of see what, and just did a 20 to 20 kilohertz sweep on them just to, you know, see what they would reproduce roughly uh, from one foot. And they're not too bad, but yeah, and then running the running them through my dad's V3 also gave me some of the other electrical uh, specs so I could plug those into my programs and rebuild, and I'm just going to do a basic uh, first order three-way crossover. I'm going to change it so the uh, woofer and mid crossover at 1500 hertz and the mid to tweeter crossover at 12,000. Kind of bring that tweeter because the tweeter, if I remember right, tested. Um, tweeter was good. Oh yes, the tweeter was good from 5,000 to 20,000. The mid was good from 1,000 to 18,000. Did some recalculations. Uh, I may even... I. Don't have the well. Actually, I might have the parts. I might even put a Zobel on the woofer. But here's the old mid and tweeter. They're good. There's the other old woofer. No good. There's two new woofers. Same woofers that are in here will be in here. They chose those because they look a lot alike, except for those are better. So yeah, this is a sneak peek of the next ugh, speaker project I'll be doing. These should go a lot quicker because I'm not going to do much with the the outside. And they are actually in pretty good shape. The covers are in pretty good shape. So it's mostly going to be re-gluing all the joints, putting in bracing, putting in, you know, acoustic stuffing treatment, putting the new drivers in, new components. There's the new inductors, caps, putting together a basic first order three-way tweeter or tweeter crossover and sticking them back together and having to listen and seeing if I can actually make something decent out of these crappy old house speakers. So if you're interested in that, uh, like and subscribe and stay tuned because that will be coming soon. All right, guys. Thanks for watching. Good night.